Praise the Lord. Good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And it is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here this morning to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in the world. As I always say, beloved and friends, that we are living in a very sick and sinful world where Jesus Christ himself promised. He says, Lo, I am with you always. Ways. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome this morning? Isn't that great? Isn't that mighty? Isn't that majestic that God himself promised to be with us in every situation, in every circumstances, in every trial, in every testing, in every storm, in every decision making. He said in his words, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee, and no plague shall come nigh thy dwelling. Welcome this morning. Let's give him a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Sincerely from my heart. Beloved and friends, family, relatives, loved ones, I release a very special blessing upon your life this morning. And I pray that God will bless you physically, spiritually, socially, materially, financially, educationally, every area in your life. And whatever you do with your two hands, it shall prosper. Let me break it down this morning. I pray that God will bless your homes, that God will bless your marriage God will bless your children. God will bless your finances. He will bless your business. He will bless you on the job. Give you favor and promotion on the job. And whatever you do with your two hands, it shall prosper in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. Let's give the Lord a big hand. We deserve all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, all the thanks, Lord. He says in his words, He Healing is the children's bread. And the first covenant he made with man was the covenant of healing. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes I am healed. You are healed. We are healed. In Jesus' name, let's give him a big hand today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This morning I cover everyone under the blood of Jesus. And I build a hedge around your life every spirit of witchcraft oh be a demonic forces evil blights generational curses whether for second third or fourth generational curse I break I destroy I reverse every curse that was spoken against your life in Jesus name I break every chain every barrier every fetter every evil and every work of darkness I destroy under the blood of Jesus and in the mighty name of Jesus whom the son set free is free indeed you are free this morning in Jesus' name. Let's give him a big hand. You are free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father God, I pray a deep mortal man of clay in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. Born out every sickness, born out every pain, every disease, every infirmities, every evil and every work of darkness from this body, from this physical body. As I minister your words this morning, your words will go forth with dunamis and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit uh, that many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be delivered, many will be set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness uh, in Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. Isn't he awesome this morning? Isn't he great? Uh, isn't he mighty? Isn't he majestic this morning? 
my friends and beloved hallelujah praise god thank you jesus something strange yes something strange beloved that the bible speaks about is happening and no one is able to explain the euphrates river take where you stand right now this morning consider the very ground beneath your feet that you are standing on now dive let me dive deeper into your mind this morning and think about what lies at the very core of this earth we call home today yes my friends you see beloved and friends the bible god own word gives gives us hints this morning in it, it gives us glimpses of mysterious happenings yes beloved at the center of this earth that we are living now let me tell you folks uh, this morning something isn't all sunshine and rainbow down here on the sort uh, no sir no madam they are strange yes every day we see natural disaster strange things uh, the, 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 good, uh, the good book says that the belly of this world and the pages of the book of revolution the apostle paul talks about the bottomless split yes my friends imaginary my friends is haunting today it's as if there is a whole rim, a whole rim of converse and void right beneath our feet. There are things of the spirit world that are confined here, and, and there are spirit beings, demonic armies bound in the bottomless pit. These are demonic beings bound in chains waiting for a moment yes my friends the scripture foretold of the time when the boundaries that god has put in place hallelujah that when veil between our world between our world and theirs will be a torn apart will be torn apart and when that happens my friends oh dear ones these demonic entities once confined yes my friends will flood into our world yes they'll be set loose on restraint my friends there is a massive problem yes a ma massive problem with a lot of modern day preaching today many pastors want to make everything black and white cut and dry so they avoid big topics such as these that I'm preaching on this morning some ministers even preach against the fact that there is a real spirit world yes but my friends people of God there is a real spirit spirit world far bigger than you and i could ever imagine as real spirit world with beings far greater and more intelligent than you today and i and i within this Praise the Lord, there are forces. Now the spirit realm is vast, incomprehensible, vast, my friends, polluted with beings that possesses wisdom and power that will make the mightiest among us look feeble today. Can you grasp, grasp the vastness of our universe today, my friends? Can you phantom its depth today, friends and beloved? Our time on this earth is but a blip of fitting moment yes most of us will barely touch a hundred years few get that on this earth but a hundred years in the timeline of eternity we think we know so much but in reality our knowledge is limited our knowledge is limited consider this this morning we explored less than five percent of our own oceans yes my friends less than five percent yes you you heard that uh, correct my friends less than five percent hallelujah the vast deep blue sea on our planet re remains a mystery remains a mystery and when you gaze up uh, at the sky ponder of this uh, humanity has only set foot uh, yes on earth uh, hallelujah and our moon uh, our moon that's not even what a fraction a fraction of the vast expanse uh, of space today only earth my friends and the moon have visited by humans uh, so less than 0.1 percent uh, hallelujah of space says we explored hallelujah if we know so little about our physical world how much more mysterious is their spirit realm my friends 
a realm that transcends our tangible reality. Yes, there are things in the scripture, my friends, the things today that make you scratch your head, especially when it talks about the depth of this earth. My friends, we may might think that we achieve the pinnacle of understanding, but folks, we are just scratching the surface. We like toddlers trying to understand the mechanisms of a jet engine. Yes, human pride deceives us into thinking we got it all figured out. But in God's grand trustee, our knowledge is but at a tread. So before my friends, we stand tall today. Think, think, my friends, we all have the answer. Let's humble ourselves and recognize how little we truly understand about God's magnificent creation, both seen and unseen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah 55 verse 8 clearly tells us today, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways, neither are your ways. My ways, said the Lord, for as the heavens is higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts the spirit world my friends ladies and gentlemen today is far bigger than the human mind yes praise God far bigger than the human mind and this Bible tells us clearly this Bible tells us that there is a real spirit world hallelujah praise God we need to stop attempting to simplify things today my friends things for human mind the Bible tells us there are are some strange things on our feet. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 9 verse 1 to 3 clearly tells us, and the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fell from heaven into the earth, and to him was given the keys of the bottomless pit. Hallelujah. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit. Yes, and the smoke of of a, of a great furnace yes beloved the sun and the air were darkened yes the season of the smoke the smoke of the pits hallelujah and there came out the smoke locusts from the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power yes as the serpents of the earth have power yes my friends power however today hallelujah we are not going to focus on the bottomless pit today my friends and the great army that comes forth from the bottomless pit we are going to focus on the river Euphrates river which most of you have heard about it by now Revelation chapter 9 verse 13 to 15 clears it tells us then the six angels sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God sang to the six angel who had the trumpet hallelujah release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates beloved and friends so the four angels who had been prepared for the for the hour and day and, and month and year were released they were released to kill a third a third of mankind the release of the four angels at the great river Euphrates marked a turning point in the book of Revelation the first four you trumpet yes my friends were warning a call to repentance and an invitation to turn to God but the fifth angel trumpets were more severe my friends and their judgments and direct specifically against those who refuse, refuse to repent in the first war mankind is not killed but rather tormented by demonic locusts and their, their ladder the destroyer my friends the destroyer the locusts and the destroyer no one dies during this time however during the second world yes my friends a powerful army is unleashed to kill a third of mankind yes according to the scripture yes when the six angels sounds 
four four angels who had been bound listen carefully at the great river Euphrates are released those angels were specifically prepared for this significant event beloved and friends although we do not know who prepared them they were bound for this particular hour and for a divine purpose a divine purpose while it's uncertain whether these angels are considered bad it is likely that they are evil angels yes my friends I personally believe I believe they are evil angels because no holy angels will be bound nevertheless regardless of their nature today they serve my friends a divine purpose hallelujah the reason these angels were born specifically at the river Euphrates and not any other river is not that ex this is stated in the scriptures. However, the Euphrates River holds significant symbolism. Symbolism throughout the Bible, my friends, it is associated with several significant events and then places in Genesis chapter 2, verse 10 through 14. It is linked to the first sin. Hallelujah. And location of the Garden of Eden. Yes, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 16. Yes, it connected to the first murder hallelujah the river is also mentioned in genesis chapter 14 verse 1 where it is associated with the first war confederation and in genesis verse 10 to 8 8 to 10 clearly tells us where it is linked with the first dictatorship hallelujah praise god additionally my friends the river Euphrates holds significance as land mark of Babylon. Babylon represents, my friends, human pride, human pride, rebellion, and adultery. Praise God. It was the first great empire that, pers that, that persecuted God's people. The river also served as a critical military asset, providing protection to the city of Babylon from invasion, while the exact reason for binding the angels at the Euphrates River is not explicitly explain the associations highlight the historical and symbolic importance of the river in revelation in relation to rebellion sin and opposition faced by God's people throughout biblical history you know, friends revelation chapter 9 <coughs> verse 16 to 19 clearly tells us uh, number two of the army of the horsemen was 200 million I heard a number of them, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplate of fiery red, hissing blue, and sulfur yellow. Praise God, the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire fire and brimstone yes my friends by those by these plagues the tower of mankind was killed by the fire yes and the smoke and the brimstone which is about 2.66 billion people which came out of the mouths and of the power is in their mouth and in the tail yes my friends for the tails are led like serpents having heads hallelujah with them they they do harm hallelujah they harm the description of the horsemen in revelation chapter 9 verse 16 to 19 clearly tells us uh, yes it is indeed strange and yes presenting a vivid image of horror and destruction and a connection of the demonic realm some have suggested that these horsemen represent a natural army of men the proper the particular description could be symbolic of modern warfare with its uh, mechanism equipment and advanced weaponry it is possible that uh, John has the limited understanding use these vivid terms to depict the theology of his times however upon careful examination my friends it becomes clear that the description does not align with uh, controversial war horses or modern military equipment 
equipment uh, like fighter jets or tanks. Yes, the imagery does goes beyond that, uh, can be attributed to human technology. Yes, therefore, my friends, today a safer interpretation may be on to understand this today. It is literal. Is it? Is it? This is a literal army of 200 million, but not composed of human beings for a specific notion. Instead, it specify a demonic army. Yes, invading the earth, held in bondage by the Lord until the appointed time when God grants them permission to unleash their destructive power. Beloved and friends, as I stated at the start of my sermon this morning, there are some strange things under the earth. Hallelujah. This interpretation aligns with the early description of the demonic locus. Yes, in the same chapter today, yes, the idea of a demonic army fits within the overall context, my friends, of revelation and the spiritual warfare. This Expected uh, through the book uh, is it emphasizes the focus of evil being unleashed upon the world during the end times, uh, working in accordance with God's divine plan. Beloved and friends, the strange uh, demonic uh, spirits coming in up into the earth. Uh, hallelujah! Praise God! Thank you! Thank you, Lord! Thank you! Hallelujah! Praise God! Shikanama Sante Reviende Revelation chapter 9 verse 20 to 21 clearly tells us but the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands that they will not worship demons and idols of gold, gold silver bronze stone wood which cannot neither see nor hear nor walk yes they did not repent of their murders of worshipping idols or their sorceries of their sexual immorality or their thefts it is indeed surprising that despite witnessing the remarkable events described in the book of revelation including the song of the seven trumpets catastrophic natural disasters the torment of demonic locusts, yes, hurricane, volcano, thunderstorm, rise of Apollyon, the destroyer, the people of what remain unrepentant. One will expect that such extraordinary occurrences will lead them to recognize the gravity of their actions and turn to God. Beloved and friends, consider this morning the sounding of the seven trumpets. Praise God, each trumpet brought forth a different judgment judgment or catastrophic upon the earth serving as a clear sign of divine intervention these calamities such as hail mixed with blood yes a burning mountain cast into the sea and darkened skies will have prompted a deep reflection of their sinful ways but men love darkness rather than light today because their deeds their deeds were evil and they refuse to repent man can refuse to repent for the more the torment caused by the demonic locus which with Apollyon leading their destructive charge should have shaken their hearts and caused them to have mercy and forgiveness the very presence of such demonic forces will have served as a wake up call exposing the darkness of their deeds in the need of repentance but beloved men love darkness right Rather than like that because their deeds, their deeds are evil and they refuse to repent. Praise the Lord. Yet, despite all these astonishing events, the divine judgments, like the people stumbling, it persists in their sinful ways. It reveals the depth of their spiritual condition and the hardness of their heart. Yes, beloved and friends, even when faced with God's judgment, judgment, yes, right judgment they remain on healing clinging to their sinful lifestyles in the book of Revelation there is a striking description description of people who will rather seek death than repent yes my friends in Revelation chapter 6 
verse 16 it is written that they recognize the judgment of God unfolding before their eyes they were aware of the magnitude of his power and authority of the point that they long for mountains to fall on them seeking escape from the impending judgment this portrayal reveals the depth of the hardness of heart and stubborn rebellion despite witnessing the un undeniable truth of God's existence and his righteous judgment they choose to resist repentance it highlights the critical reality of individuals who is the face of God who in the face of God's mercy and the call for transformation obstinate cling to their sinful ways unwilling to turn from their wickedness it serves as a reminder today of the importance of a softened heart and a willingness my friends to humbly submit to God acknowledging today our needs for his forgiveness and salvation beloved and friends this stubborn demonstration today has fallen the falling state of humanity is shown how deeply ingrained sin can be binding individuals to the reality of their need for salvation and preventing them from embracing God's mercy. It is tragic reflection of the human tendency to resist divine grace even in the face of overwhelming evidence. Beloved and friends, however, it is crucial to remember that God's ultimate desire is for all people to come to repentance, yes, and experience his redeeming love. The events unfolding in Revelation serves as warnings and opportunities for individuals to turn away from their sin and embrace God's forgiveness through the people's response may be disheartening my friends it underscores the importance of persistently sharing the message of salvation and interceding for those who are still lost in their unrepentant ways in the book of revelation chapter 9 verse 20 to 21 is we witness a sovereign truth today people will be worshiping demons it is a thought that may it seems difficult to grasp but if we honestly reflect on the state of our world today we can see glimpses of reality already unfolding unfolding in our present society it is becoming increasingly common for Satan and his influences to be celebrated and embraced my friends the description of lies and spread by the enemy are substance creeping into various aspects aspects of our lives often masked as normal or even progressive ideologies my friends the values and principles rooted in God's truth are being challenged and replaced today with a distorted moral compass today my friends the media entertainment industry and popular culture often glorifies behaviors and beliefs that directly intradicts yes my friends go teaching that was once considered immoral or sinful is now considered a flaw that Satan is buried around something under the guise of freedom or personal expression encouraging people to indulge in activities that are contrary to God's design for all lives beloved and friends the worship of demons mentioned in revelation reminds us of the spiritual battle at hand satan seeks to deceive and draw people away from god's truth today my friends enticing them to worship anything other than the one true god this can be manifested in various ways today such as idolizing material possessions fame, power, or even engaging in occult practices that invites demonic influences. Beloved and friends, as followers of Jesus Christ, it is crucial today to be vigilant, vigilant and discerning. We must be aware of the subtle lies and influences of the enemy and his 
surroundings, our world may be walking in a direction that embraces and normalizes the worship of demons. But as believers today, we are called, we are called to stand for in faith and be a light in the midst of darkness. Give yourself a big Our trust is to live in God according to God's word. We are sharing the truth of love to the Christ to those around us and we must not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 clearly tells us through prayer, study the scriptures and reliance on the Holy Spirit, we can na navigate these challenging times and be a beacon of hope in a world that desperately needs the redeeming grace of Jesus Christ. Let us remember that God's power is greater than any forces of darkness and as we stand firm in Him, yes, <coughs> we can... <coughs> resist the temptation and description of Satan in doing so we can be a testament of his love and truth sharing a light and exposes the emptiness of worshiping anything other than the one true God today my friends Hallelujah, as I preach you today, praise God, I know many are sick on to get, many are sick in the hospitals, many are sick in their homes, many are on the bed waiting for the moment to pass on. My friends, but today the man of God is back here to tell you that you will not die, but you will live. You will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny, and you will not go home before your time. The devil will not take you before your time in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever is your sickness today, probably the, the doctors have already given your family a report and a bill that states that he you will, you will not live but you will die but I'm here to tell you that you will not die but you will live to fulfill purpose and you will not go until you fulfill your purpose in Jesus name those who are sick today my friends if you have cancer you have AIDS you have COVID you have diabetes a heart problem liver problem lungs problem kidney problem blood issue a blood dialysis problem prostate cancer what the case may be hallelujah if you're blind you're deaf you don't you lame today i want to introduce you to jesus if you're suffering from depression oppression frustration anxiety i want to introduce you to the lord who can set you free if you're suffering with a migraine headache and that migraine headache is killing you today, my friends, God going to touch you and heal you from that migraine headache. Yes, if you have diabetes and you're just skin and bone, God is touching your blood right now, setting your blood in order. You will not die, but you will live to fulfill purpose and calling and destiny. Yes, that person with arthritis pain in your joints, God is touching your body right now he's healing you from that arthritis pain in your fingers in your knees your toes your elbows every joint in your body you have tried everything nothing is working today is your day for a miracle if you're watching from the usa the uk canada the caribbean any part of europe or the world today is your day for a miracle for a miracle for healing for deliverance yes my friends and beloved if your demon pulls yesterday god i see demons are are leaving body left right and center i rebuke those harassing demons those tormenting demons i command them to go right now in the name of jesus i rebuke those evil spirit in Jesus, the whom the Son set free is free today. I feel a tremendous anointing here today, but I know I'm going to send for the anointing wherever you are. I know God says we as preachers must lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. But my friends, God is no respect of persons. There is no distance. There is no barrier. There is no limit where God is concerned. So wherever you are today, today is your day for a miracle. 
miracle. Jesus took 39 stripes upon his back. According to medical doctors, they are 39 major sicknesses and pain and disease that is plaguing mankind today all across the world. And today, my friends, today is your day for a miracle. Today is your day for healing. Let me go back a little further. Yes, God who formed man out of dust and bring into his nostrils. He knows every bone, every marrow, every joint, every tissue, every organ in your body. There is no big deal for him to touch you and heal you and set you free. So today is your day. Today is your day for healing. Today is your day for deliverance. Today is your day for a miracle. Right now, wherever you are, as I send for the anointing, right now in the name of Jesus, be here in the name of Jesus. Be set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I see many are healed. Many are saved from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities. That person with stage 4 cancer, I see right now if you're feeling a boring, it's a work of God. The Holy Spirit is burning out that cancer. Yes, that man with a, a, a hole in his heart. God is healing you right now. That man with both kidneys shut down you're too old to take a transplant god is setting you right now he's healing you he's replacing those kidney that person with prostate cancer god is healing you that person with, 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 with aids god is healing you that person with diabetes god is healing you that person with a migraine headache it is going hallelujah let's give him a big hand yes i see people with depression oppression frustration anxiety it is leaving now it's a spirit it's a harassing demon want to torment you yes in the name of jesus you heal Write me, text me, call me, and let me know what God has done for you. Go back, beloved and friends, let the doctors check you. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Let's give him a big hand. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love you very much in the love of God. My friends, beloved family, relatives, loved ones, because of my busy schedule, I was not here for a few days. Yes, my friends, God bless you richly. Do enjoy this blessed day that God have and remember to serve God make sure you're saved and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life because this dispensation is coming to an end the 6,000 year dispensation is coming to an end yes my friends there will be a new dispensation with the 7,000 years coming very soon repent and be saved for this world is heading for destruction yes my friends Friends, be prepared for what is coming and what is happening. Make sure that you make your salvation secure. In Jesus' name, God bless you richly. In Jesus' precious and gracious and wonderful name. I'll see you in the next session. By the grace of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord.